Hi, Mike Kennedy. Watched an interesting show, at least to me. Uh, Expedition Unknown is doing a two-part thing on the Dead Sea Scrolls. Now, it looks like they've kind of separated, which I think is good, into the first show was all about the parchments, the history of the parchments, and uh, some of what they contain. And the next episode, I think, is going to be more of a treasure hunt because it was a copper scroll that uh, supposedly tells where uh, enormous amount of treasures are. In other words, uh, the, the theory is that, you know, we're coming up to 70 AD. The Romans have gotten tired of this Jewish problem. They go in and they ramsack the temple. First they desecrate it, then they tear it apart. And so there's a feeling that a lot of Jews may have escaped the area with items from the temple, uh, like maybe even these parchments were, a lot of these were written in Jerusalem, not, you know, not actually in uh, the area where the Essenes are, which many people uh, believe are the authors. Uh, but some people believe that a lot of these scrolls were taken from Jerusalem and were hidden in these areas. And so this copper scroll, which they had to cut open, to cut apart to open up and see, talks about these vast amounts of treasure. And it was interesting that uh, I read a kind of a little research into the temple that Solomon built. And of course he uh, uh, was considered one of the wisest men that ever lived. And not that he took his own advice, he got into a lot of problems, but uh, as far as business was concerned, uh, they even had to go back and try to calculate if the, the Jewish temple in Solomon could have had as much gold as he claimed, because it seemed like a astronomical claim. But they were able to verify that the amount of, of gold and different things like that was within reason that... Uh, that could have been gathered from these different cultures that he interacted with. But, so anyway, you have that copper scroll. That's going to be another show. But uh, the original researchers, they don't go into that much, which is kind of good because it was so pathetic. The original researchers were really poor at understanding what they were dealing with. They seemed to be more intent in the idea of trying to publish a paper they didn't, they didn't consider, I don't know how you could consider these valuable and use scotch tape to put them together with. So that here, any, I would think, person that was familiar with documents and, or repairs or anything wouldn't take this new product, I guess at the time, scotch tape was new, and just go sticking that willy-nilly on these fragments. But the team was also smoking while they were doing it. They were uh, using, uh, you know, putting together these pieces like a jigsaw puzzle. They were doing it in bright sunlight. So, in other words, they were doing just about everything wrong to uh, cause the parchments to degree even further. But, so now they're in good hands. Uh, there's this team, uh, there's kind of like a building in Israel called... Uh, the building or temple of the scrolls, but anyway, uh, there's uh, research people attached to it. They've been tasked with the idea of a lot of the fragments have to be cleaned, especially uh, because they were subjected to the, these first researchers who really kind of messed them up with the scotch tape and the light and everything. So they clean these fragments off and then they're photographing them under like I forget whether it was six or eight different wavelengths of light. And what you find with different wavelengths of light, like particularly uh, infrared, that that will sometimes reveal ink very clearly that you can't even see with the human eye. Sometimes ultraviolet light will, uh, depending on what it's, you're photographing, just pick up what's on the surface. So you can see, you can kind of see the surface of the article without everything underneath, which is which is valuable too, I would assume, to see the weave of the patterns of, or anything like that, of the parchment and, you know, 
each individual bin is going to tell you something and you know certain ones can be perhaps combined or whatever so uh, it's it's really nice that they're doing this now they're doing things the correct way and uh, this information is all oops <laughs> I tilted this information is all going to be accessible to everyone I mean a large part of the scrolls uh, you can purchase just in any good bookstore and uh, again these many people consider this the the uh, biggest find of the century for archaeological discoveries because they give such an insight into that time period because basically what you have is well we'll say three groups we'll put that treasure map into a separate group but what you have within the context of these other writings is you have uh, copies of biblical text we've actually got the oldest copy ever found of the uh, Ten Commandments we now have a copy of the book of Isaiah that's a thousand years earlier than anything previous to it and uh, an extremely close agreement with what we have now which kind of refutes this idea that oh gee these scribes they copied it over and every time someone added a mistake and so you can't really believe what you read now because there's so many errors incorporated in it just not true these scribes that recopied things they dedicated their whole life to it and it was all about being as careful as they possibly could and uh, the style of writing even is a clue for putting these different fragments together because eventually they recognize certain writing and know that there was a particular scribe who did this one sheet and it allows them to bring in other segments in a quicker manner and see if they actually fit in that text or not and uh, so it's just amazing and then we have a whole other group of writings so we've got the the scroll we've got the copies of uh, biblical text including uh, quite a few top copies of the book of Tobit now the book of Tobit, Tobit is including Catholic Bibles not Protestant Bibles and uh, some uh, scholars are thinking of changing that and including the book of Tobit because there were like nine copies of it and the theory was that uh, the more copies were there the more the text was used so it kind of gives weight to the idea that the book of Tobit was in what we would call a Jewish canon say perhaps back at that time uh, so then you have a whole group of other writings that are more uh, writings about their uh, their experience their beliefs uh, like they they saw a great battle between light and darkness sons of light sons of darkness you gotta understand if we we key into this idea that the Essenes wrote it they've left Jerusalem and they believe uh, the temple's been totally corrupted which of course uh, in a way they're correct uh, Rome now is the ruler Rome now is appointing uh, high priests so the Jews aren't don't have a lot of say in it they don't have a lot of you know originally it would be done by by them not by the government so it's kind of a, a figurehead position so sorry about the lopsidedness here but so uh, they were kind of right about that so they go off into the desert and so uh, it's interesting one of the things they believed in was the uh, the two messiahs in other words they clearly saw that there was a suffering si servant messiah and there was a victorious king messiah so they kind of separated in two people which is interesting and you know uh, as we see uh, Jesus come on the scene if we read the New Testament we can see that they uh, many people were expecting him to uh, set up an earthly kingdom at that time that he was going to be there to free them of this Roman oppression and uh, that didn't happen politically at, what, at least he came as the suffering servant to uh, give up his life 
to uh, make a fully open door to the Father through the forgiveness of sins. So, very interesting. I thought they did this first show good. Uh, there was additional information I hadn't heard about. It was good. They presented the material good. And uh, I wonder if this show will be more in line with some of the other ones where, the, you know, some of these shows they almost always find what they're looking for, but they never actually find it. So tell me what you think. Bye.